Ready there? All right, page 73 in your medication aid book. And we are on now our unit 12. And we're talking about respiratory system. All right, these are the structures in the respiratory system. These should look familiar to you. Pharynx is, of course, your throat. Your epiglottis. Your epiglottis is that leaf-like structure located in your back of your throat. And it's really important because of swallowing. You know, it has to, you have to raise up the back of your throat. The epiglottis has to close off the trachea so you can swallow. And then it releases and comes back down so you can breathe again. Okay. Did you get that? Because that'll be on your test. Okay. Larynx is your voice box. Laryngitis. Larynx, the voice box. Now your lungs. The lungs are, of course, at the central part of it. This is where oxygen and carbon dioxide make their exchange, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. There's two lungs, of course, the left and the right. Your right has three lobes, left has two. Alright. Now the bronchi, you have two, so this is your trachea, where the air comes in, you're pulling in your air, it comes down your trachea, and it branches off here, like that, to your left and to the right side. Those are your bronchi. And then they branch off into bronchioles, which are these. It kind of looks like an upside down tree or a, a head of broccoli. <laughs> And then at the end of your bronchioles, you have your alveoli sacs, these little tiny air sacs. The air sacs are called alveoli. Do you see that? Those are where the air exchange takes place. And this is a beautiful system. And the way it works is, and if you've ever seen real alveoli, like on a cadaver or something, to me, they look like miniature grapes. Oh, yeah, a little tiny. And so if I were to take an alveoli and blow it up real big like this, take one of these little ones and blow it up big, what you would see in these is, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday, how you have these arterioles and venules laying around these alveoli like this, right? And then you have the capillaries that bridge between them. Okay, now your alveoli is a semi-permeable membrane. What that means is some things can get through and some things can't. It's very, very thin, very thin, very thin membrane. Okay, what are you doing? <laughs> she was smelling oatmeal or cereal, and now she's saying vitamins. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, so here's your alveoli, and these capillaries and these little tiny venules and arterioles wrap around it and lay right up on it. And it's a semi permeable membrane, that means it's super thin. <coughs> and so you breathe in. And that air fills that air sac, and the oxygen goes into that air sac, and here's those, those little tiny vessels wrapped around it. And the iron's there, right? And it attracts the oxygen, remember, like a magnet. And so it goes right through that membrane and into that, and it takes it to your body to feed your cells. That's how you get the air into your, into your body. And then when you breathe, breathe out, the air sacs full of that carbon dioxide, which is released out into the air and in and out. And that's how it happens. So what could possibly go wrong? Smoking, um, black lung disease <coughs> from being a minor. Uh, maybe you, a lot of the guys back in the day, we didn't know about asbestos or um, silicon, like breathing in dust particles and such. Anything that's going to harm those little air sacs. 
because those little air sacs are very, very tender, thin little membranes. And if you're breathing in tar or any kind of, oh my gosh, a lot of people, you've read about how China's having those terrible, terrible air pollution. Well, that gets in those little air sacs and then it can't, it, the oxygen can't get through it. It can't get through that membrane because it's coated with the goo. So therefore, they don't have good oxygen in their blood. You do the pulse oximeter on their finger, right? And if it doesn't show high enough, that means they're not getting oxygen to their tissues. They're not getting oxygen to their tissues. For, it could be for several reasons. One of them could be because their alveoli are damaged because of the, crumb, the gook they've breathed and has coated the lining of the alveoli sac so that the oxygen can't get through there, okay? So that is a huge problem, a huge problem we deal with. Also, it, in certain diseases like asthma, yeah, you get a lot of mucus and you get constriction. So if that mucus is in there, it's hard to get the oxygen through that mucus too. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. These are your intercostal muscles. In between your ribs, you feel those muscles? Those are your intercostal muscles. Now, on your little guys that have emphysema and such, look at them. Sometimes you can see them using these muscles. Have you ever seen those little skinny guys? And they're breathing and you can just see that suck in and those muscles contract. It's taken everything they got to be able to breathe. Your diaphragm is this, right? It's shaped like an upside down bowl and so when you breathe in the diaphragm pulls out pulls down and that makes that makes a vacuum so you're sucking in air when your diaphragm pulls down it causes a vacuum yeah <coughs> brain is the control center for respiration the brain is that's why if we give someone too much narcotics too much um, morphine, that kind of thing. Their breathing slows down because it's depressing the central nervous system. So carbon dioxide builds up in the blood and triggers the lower midbrain to stimulate inspiration. That's why you should never turn up the oxygen too high on someone who has chronic lung disease you can knock out their drive to breathe. Did you know that? No. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mucus. Everybody knows what mucus is, right? That yeah. sticky, googie, yeah. Mm -hmm. We won't go into that. Normal rate of respiration. Your normal rate of respiration is 12 to 25 breaths per minute. You'll need to know that. Disorders of the respiratory system. Asthma. I'm sure we have somebody in here with asthma, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here you have two things that are going on. You have airway inflammation. The bronchioles get all inflamed. And um, lots of times you have excess mucus with it as well. This is, have you ever heard somebody wheeze? Yeah, it's a horrible sound, isn't it? It's kind of like a whistling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's scary, isn't it? Really scary. Mm -hmm. Most people with asthma have allergies. Some have um, triggers to things like exercise or stress. Something will trigger it and it will cause that. Yeah. Yeah. Just about anything. Some some of them. Yeah. But asthma you can grow out of, right? Some people do. Some people don't, yeah. Some people get asthma as they become older. Yeah, because my son wasn't born with it, but was diagnosed with it about six months ago. But he wasn't born with it. Yeah, usually, you, you, you know, um, I mean, usually babies aren't born and they say they have asthma. Right. Usually they're diagnosed after the age of two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my daughter. Yeah. 
she she had she's chronic asthma. Yeah. But she hasn't had no episodes in a great while. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe it's over. You know, it all depends. Some people can grow out of it. Some people never, never do. But you know what? You don't back. let yeah. them have it as. I have a son. I mean, he ended up in Denver at that Children's National Jewish Hospital for respiratory diseases. And he ran track all the way through high school and college. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's got silver in the nationals. So, I mean, you don't use things. as You, you, you learn how to manage it. Asthma is a disease of, of management. It's chronic. By the way, do you know the difference between chronic and acute? Acute is, yeah, acute is, I'm, I got the flu, but I'm going to get better. It's short term, it's, it just happens, now I'm going to get better. Chronic is long standing, something that you have to manage, you own it. <laughs> you know, diabetes is chronic, right? Um, asthma, generally speaking, is chronic. Um, <clears throat> Which brings me to my next one I want to talk about, and that's COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, if you have something that is chronic, it's long standing, right? It's something that you, it's not going away anytime soon. So, COPD is a, is an umbrella. It is an umbrella term, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So it is a umbrella term for long-standing chronic asthma, chronic long-standing, what is the next one? Bronchitis. Bronchitis, good. And uh, yes, emphysema. And this is an umbrella term referring to all of these. Now, C stands for chronic. So you're going to have to manage it. Long standing. Obstructive. What is something that is obstructing? If something's obstructing, what does that mean? Blocking. It's blocking. blocking. Yeah. Okay. Pulmonary. What's pulmonary? Lungs and disease, okay? COPD. Is COPD curable? No. No. No cure. You can only manage it, right? So asthma is not curable. No. Sometimes in young people, the body can, they can grow out of it or whatever, but once you're at a certain age, you just, it's just what it is. Okay, I want to talk about emphysema for a little bit. In particular, it says emphysema is an abnormal enlargement of the air spaces at the end of the bronchioles. Okay, so what happens here is your alveoli get so clogged. Usually people with emphysema have either are long-term smokers or they worked in coal mines or they were something where they've inhaled all these particles and the alveoli have become clogged and coated with stuff so that the oxygen and carbon dioxide will not cross the barrier there and so the air sacs die they die yes and so they have dead spaces and you look at that x-ray and there's just blank areas, you know, where there are no more air sacs. How bad is that? Bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. And, and you should, when you see them try to walk, do they, they get out of breath like that, don't yeah. they? Just go to the bathroom. Just trying to get to the bathroom. They're completely out of breath, out of energy, everything. Even talking, like yeah, eating, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's because the air sacs are destroyed. Entire. Okay. Yes, sure, because if you don't have any air to your tissues, yeah. Jada was hospitalized for five days for collapsed air sacs. Atelectasis, yeah. My son was too, yeah, that's tough stuff. 
Scary, scary. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. Pleurisy is the inflammation of the lining of the lungs. Has anybody ever had pleurisy? It feels like you're being stabbed. It is a very sharp pain. Pneumonia is an acute infection of the lower respiratory system. Pneumonia can be caused from bacteria, it can be caused from virus, it can be caused from chemicals. It can be caused from what happens when people have dysphagia, spelled with a G? No, dysphagia. Swallowing. Swallowing. And some of it, they aspirate. Uh, the water. The it the the yeah. Okay, so it, it goes the where? In the, in the lungs. In the lungs. And then what happens to it? Infectious. It gets infected. Infectious. Yeah. If they have dysphagia, spelled with a G, then some of that, whatever it is, could be orange juice, whatever it is, gets down into the lungs and gets infected, right? That's aspiration pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Pulmonary embolism, we talked a little bit about this. I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was a journalist by the name of David Bloom. And yes, when he went to Iraq and um, of course, the plane ride there is like 12 hours, and he got there at like 3 in the morning. He only had a couple hours sleep, maybe, and then boom, he had to jump up and run to the tank, and he had complained that he had a charley horse in his calf right before then. What that was is it was a blood clot that dislodged, and by the time he got on the tank and they got out an hour or so, it got to his lung, and yeah, he had a pulmonary embolism and died right there. So, and yeah, that's because, and if you've ever flown in some of those overseas flights, man, you're sitting like a sardine in there, and they don't let you get up and walk around anymore because, you know, they're afraid, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, they, you just have to sit there. It's awful. It's, uh, mm. Well, you got to get up and use the bathroom. You can't wait in line, though. They don't even let you wait in line for the bathroom anymore. Oh, you have to wait until the... So mm -hmm. And so everybody, as soon as somebody comes out the next person's, you know, it's just... A lot of people wear those Ted hoses when they That's what you should do is wear a Ted hose and take a aspirin before you get on a plane if you're going to be flying more than just a couple hours, yeah. Okay. TB. Let's talk just a little bit about TB. Tuberculosis, right? It's a very, very, very tiny bacteria. Smaller than most. Most bacteria are not airborne. Did you know that? Most bacteria are not airborne. They're particle, right? They're droplet. They're spread by droplet. You sneeze, it goes out about as far as your arm. Gravity pulls it to the ground. But TB is so lightweight that it doesn't get pulled to the ground by gravity. It just floats around and around and around and around. Can go through the vent and come back through. That's why they have to be in reverse, in a, in a um, a special isolation place where the air is pulled only one direction so it can't get out around other things. Okay, we're going to talk about um, terminology. Bottom of 75, top of 76. Apnea. We talked about this already. What's apnea? Without breathing, without breath, sleeping. right? Without breath, so sleep apnea would be stopping breathing for a while when you're sleeping. Auscultation is listening, listening to the lungs, listening to the airflow. I don't think we have to say what coughing is. Um, dyspnea, difficulty breathing. D Y S, difficulty pnea, air. So it's difficulty breathing. Hemoptysis. Coughing up blood. Um, sputum. Sputum is not spit. If you have to get a sputum sample, you should not have them spit in the cup. You have them cough up. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're ready for drugs. Are you ready for drugs? Do you need a quick break first? Yes. yes. Okay.